Um, welcome to the Adult Basic Education Direct Service 064 Grant Competition Webinar. This is a repeat of Monday's webinar, um, hence the February 26th date. Um, there is one additional slide in this, um, in this presentation in the tips section. Otherwise, this is an exact um, repeat of Monday's webinar. The contents of this webinar complement, but do not replace, the request for grant application guidelines. Interested applicants should also carefully read the Adult Education and Family Literacy Guidelines and Division of Adult Education Policies on the Division of Adult Education Grant Competition webpage before deciding to submit an application. The guidelines have already been posted. The policies will be posted by the end of the week. We will not be answering questions during this webinar. We will provide information at the end on how to submit questions. This webinar will provide information on the grant application, review, and award processes. We will provide a general overview of the required and allowable activities and other requirements for grantees. Finally, we will provide suggested resources and grant tips. Here are some key dates related to this grant. On February 17, 2018, a notice of availability of grant funds was posted to the Pennsylvania Bulletin. Posting in the Bulletin allows us to reach the greatest number of potential applicants. PDE posted the Request for Grant Application Guidelines for the Adult Basic Education Direct Service Grant to the Division of Adult Education Grant Competitions webpage this past Friday, February 23rd. The Grants Competition webpage also contains several resource documents and links to the Pennsylvania WIOA Combined State Plan and Regional and Local Workforce Plans. Um, we originally held the webinar on Monday and we are repeating it today. The grant applications will be available in eGrants today, Wednesday, February 28th. Agencies that submitted emails to the RA ABLE account at P indicating interest in specific applications by yesterday afternoon will be able to create their grant applications today. If you have not submitted an email to the RA ABLE account um, indicating which applications or which uh, grants you would like to apply for, you must take that step before you will be able to create your application. We have posted PDFs of the grant content on the grant competitions webpage for your reference. However, the grant applications will be submitted via the eGrant system. The deadline for applicants to complete the grant application is April 3rd, 2018 at 2 p.m. Please note the 2 p.m. deadline. The Federal Adult Education and Family Literacy Act, Title II of the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, WIOA, provides funds to be awarded through the Pennsylvania Department of Education, Office of Post-Secondary and Higher Education, Division of Adult Education, to provide adult basic education services throughout the state. The federal funding available for awards to provide adult basic education direct service programming through this competition is approximately $13 million. Pennsylvania Act 143 of 1986, Adult and Family Literacy Education Act, provides funds to be awarded through the Pennsylvania Department of Education, PDE, Office of Post-Secondary and Higher Education, Division of Adult Education, to provide adult basic education and family literacy services throughout the state. The total state funding available for awards to provide adult basic education programming through this competition 
is $8,384,288. Both the federal and state dollar amounts are estimates and are subject to change based on actual federal and state budgets. The Adult Basic Education Direct Service Grant has a single narrative to describe the overall program. There are three possible budgets. Most applicants will have federal and state. Some of those may also choose to apply for the state optional tutoring program funds. Those will have three budgets. Applicants that are only eligible applicants under the federal law will only have the federal adult education budget. 15% of the available state funding $1,257,643 will be reserved for the optional tutor training competition portion of the grant ap application. Both federal and state funds, excluding the 15% reserved for tutor training, will be allocated among the 22 local workforce development areas using a needs-based funding formula. Formula details are provided in Appendix B of the Request for Grant Application Guidelines. An eligible applicant must have demonstrated effectiveness in providing adult basic and literacy activities and helping students achieve the listed outcomes. Adult basic and literacy activities are academic instruction below the post-secondary level that increase students' ability to read, write, and speak in English and perform mathematics. Applicants must provide quantitative data related to their provision of adult basic and literacy activities and student outcomes for the immediate preceding three program years. In other words, Applicants must have provided adult basic education services for the last three years. The services do not have to have been provided with the division funds, however. Applicants must provide data that demonstrate the applicant's success in helping students achieve the following outcomes. Improved skills in mathematics, reading, writing, and or English language proficiency earn a high school equivalency credential, get a job, retain a job, and enter post-secondary education or training. The data must include the number of individuals in each cohort, the number of those individuals who successfully achieved the outcome, and the resulting outcome. Applicants will also have to provide an explanation of the criteria used to assign individuals to each cohort and to determine achievement of the outcome and how the data were collected. Entities that are not able to provide the data needed for demonstrated effectiveness are not eligible providers and will not be able to receive grant funds. So if your agency has not provided adult basic education services during the last three years under any funding source, you are not an eligible provider. The federal law, WIOA, and the state law, Pennsylvania Act 143 of 1986, have slightly different lists of the types of entities that are eligible to apply for funds. Refer to the section on eligible applicants in the Request for Grant Application Guidelines for the specific lists. In some cases, entities that are eligible under WIOA are not eligible under Act 143. Those entities may only apply for federal funds. All entities that are eligible under both WIOA and Act 143 must apply for both federal and state adult education funds. A consortium or coalition of eligible applicants may apply for a grant. For the purposes of this competition for both federal and state funds, a consortium or coalition of agencies is defined as a main grantee with one or more subgrantees. The main grantee will serve as both the fiscal agent for the grant and as a provider of some of the services proposed in the grant application. 
The main grantee is responsible for ensuring that all activities provided are completed as proposed and is responsible for monitoring and compliance of the subgrantees. Answers in the grant application should reflect the work of the consortium or coalition as a whole, rather than treat each entity separately. Refer to section 205.4 of the program guidelines, that's the adult education and family literacy guidelines, for more information about the responsibilities of the main grantee in a consortium or coalition. Agencies can only be a main grantee or a subgrantee. No agency can have an adult basic education direct service grant with the Division of Adult Education and also be a subgrantee on another adult basic education direct service grant. Full details regarding all minimum requirements for adult basic education and family literacy programs are available in the Adult Education and Family Literacy Guidelines which is posted on the Division of Adult Education Grant Competitions webpage. Successful applicants for Adult Basic Education Direct Service 064 grant funds must demonstrate the capacity to provide a full range of services throughout the course of a program year. Programs must provide the following to be considered full service year-round classroom instruction and support services, including during the summer. Programs may have a reduced schedule over the summer, but must ensure access to instruction and support services. Funded programs may not shut down over the summer or for an extended winter break. Adult education and literacy activities and instruction for adult basic education, ABE, to adult, I'm sorry, to high adult secondary education, ASE, including high school equivalency test preparation as needed. In other words, an applicant cannot propose to provide a limited range of services, such as serving only individuals at beginning literacy, ABE, or only students who are at the adult secondary levels. Funded programs must have services that allow a student to enter at any educational level and progress through programming in the program. Supplemental computer-based distance learning opportunities to students participating in face-to-face -face instruction who are interested in such services. We will provide more information about this requirement on a later slide. Support services to help students address barriers to participation. Support services to help students identify education and career goals, develop employability skills, and successfully transition to post-secondary education or training or employment as appropriate. Integration of workforce preparation activities into instruction and support services. Workforce preparation activities are designed to help students develop critical thinking skills, problem solving skills, digital literacy skills, and self-management skills, including competencies in using information and resources, working with others, and understanding systems. A cadre of volunteer classroom aides to provide additional instructional support to students participating in classroom instruction. All grant recipients must use at least 5% of the state grant funds to support a tutoring program that recruits, trains, and supports volunteer classroom aides. Section AA3 of the Adult Education and Family Literacy Guidelines provides details about this activity. A program administrator who is a full-time employee of the grantee agency. The person does not have to be, be full-time on Division of Adult Education grant activities. If the program administrator is not working 100% on division-funded activities, the agency must provide evidence that this individual 
has sufficient time allocated to division funded activities to meet all of the requirements of the program administrator position. The program administrator does not have to be paid from grant funds. However, the person must have sufficient time allocated to activities supported to the grant. All adult basic education direct service grantees are required to be partners at a local PA career link site and fulfill all the roles and responsibilities of a one stop partner. The roles and responsibilities include entering into a memorandum of understanding with the local workforce board, contributing to infrastructure costs of the PA career link site, providing access to adult basic education services through the PA career link site and providing career services to eligible one-stop participants. Section AA 1.3 of the Adult Education and Family Literacy Guidelines provides more information. In addition, we will post a draft updated policy G100, Adult Education and the Workforce Development System, to the Division of Adult Education Grant Competitions webpage by the end of the week. English language acquisition activities and instruction for English as a second language ESL students based on area needs. Such instruction must include supporting ESL students to transition successfully to adult basic education or adult secondary education instruction within the programming funded by the grant and to earn a high school equivalency credential if needed. PDE has identified 18 counties in which successful applicants must provide these services. See Appendix C of the Request for Grant Application Guidelines. Um, entities proposing services in the other counties are allowed to provide ESL services as needed, but are not mandated to. Programs must refer appropriate students to the statewide distance learning project and support them as appropriate. This activity is different from the requirement to provide supplemental computer-based distance learning opportunities to students in face-to-face -face classes, which we will discuss on the next slide. Distance learning is defined in the Technical Assistance Guide for Performance Accountability under the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, National Reporting System for Adult Education, as a formal learning activity in which the students and instructors are separated by geography, time, or both. The use of computer-based curricula or other computer-based learning activities that take place during classroom instruction are not distance learning activities. Homework assignments are not distance learning activities either. Adult basic education programs funded by the Division of Adult Education will provide blended learning to interested students. In blended learning, students participate in both face-to-face -face instruction and distance learning activities. The distance learning activities are additional instruction to provide students with a greater intensity of instruction focused on their specific needs and interests to help them achieve their goals and outcomes more quickly. Students participating in distance learning opportunities with a local program must also be attending face-to-face -face classes. Distance learning may not be provided in lieu of class attendance. Eligible participants that are not able to attend face-to-face -face instruction at a local program may be referred to the statewide distance learning project for services. Participation in supplemental distance learning opportunities is not required for all students, but all funded programs must provide such services to students who are interested. Programs are expected to tell students about these opportunities as part of orientation to the adult education program. A draft of the updated policy D-130 distance learning, which includes the computer-based distance learning curricula that are currently approved for local programs to begin using in program year 2018-19, will be posted to the Division of Adult Education Grant Competitions webpage. 
In addition to the required services identified in the, pre in the previous slides, applicants may propose to provide one or more of the following activities. Corrections education, which includes adult education and literacy services for adults who are in correctional facilities. To ensure that Pennsylvania does not exceed the federal and state ceilings for corrections education, applicants may not budget or expend more than 20% of the grant amounts for corrections education. There are some additional requirements for corrections education in section AA2 of the Adult Education and Family Literacy Guidelines. Integrated English Literacy and Civics Education Activities. This is referring to the activity, not to the section 243 program, which is conducted through the 061 grant. These are education services that combine literacy instruction, English language acquisition instruction, and, and instruction on the rights and responsibilities of citizenship and civic participation. Integrated education and training activities. IET activities are allowable with federal funds only. Any IET activities proposed in the grant application will have to be approved by the Division of Adult Education before the class starts. Workplace literacy activities. Workplace literacy activities are adult basic education so services offered in collaboration with an employer at a workplace for incumbent workers. They should not be confused with the workforce preparation activities described earlier. Applicants should refer to the adult education and family literacy guidelines for more information on these activities to ensure that proposed activities are compliant. Pennsylvania Act 143 requires that 20% of the state funds allocated for adult basic education be used for programs that recruit, train, and support volunteer adult literacy education instructors, also known as volunteer tutors. These individuals provide one-on-one -on -one and small group tutoring. The Division of Adult Education recognizes that not all eligible providers of adult basic education have the capacity to use 20% of the state grant funds to support a tutoring program. Therefore, the division is reserving 15% of the state allocation for a subcompetition for optional tutoring program funds within the main Adult Basic Education Direct Service 064 competition. The remaining 5% of the mandated 20% must be used by successful Adult Basic Education Direct Service grant recipients to support volunteer classroom aides as described earlier. Applicants for the Adult Basic Education Direct Service 064 grant that are eligible applicants for state funds may choose to also apply for additional funds under the state optional tutoring program subproject for the sole purpose of supporting a program to recruit, train, and support volunteer tutors to provide one-on-one -on -one and or small group instruction. Details regarding the Requirements for tutoring programs are in Appendix A of the Adult Education and Family Literacy Program Guidelines. The optional tutoring program funds are only available as part of the larger Adult Basic Education Direct Service 064 grant. Applicants may not apply for only optional tutoring program funds. However, review of the optional tutoring program proposal will be independent of the review of the main grant. Therefore, it is possible that applicants for federal and state funds that also apply for tutoring program funds will receive the main funds, but not the tutoring program funds. Funds awarded under the optional tutoring program subproject may only be used to cover costs directly associated with recruiting, training, and supporting tutors. All costs associated with the provision of services to the students served by the tutors must be allocated to the main 
064 adult education grant. No administrative costs may be charged to the tutoring program subproject budget. Programs that are awarded optional tutoring program funds must have tutoring programs established and providing services as proposed during program year 2018-19. Programs that do not meet this requirement will not have the additional tutoring program portion of the grant renewed in the following program years. There are two types of tutoring programs that applicants may propose under the optional tutoring program community-based tutoring program and a prison-based peer tutoring program. Applicants may provide one or both. The Division of Adult Education no longer allows the literacy core model. Requirements for each type of program are explained in Section AA3 of the Adult Education and Family Literacy Program Guidelines. We are providing some key information here. For community-based tutoring programs. Programs receiving additional state 064 funds for a community-based tutoring program must have at least one tutor coordinator who works at least 20 hours per week on tutoring program activities. The division strongly recommends that the tutor coordinator be a dedicated full-time position. Volunteer tutors must provide one-on-one -on -one or small group instruction to students for a minimum of three hours per week. They must have a bachelor's degree or be participating in an AmeriCorps program. Volunteer tutors are required to have written lesson plans for all tutoring or small group sessions and should work with tutor coordinators to review goals and adjust student placement as needed. Volunteer tutors may not administer the standardized assessments used by the agency for reporting purposes unless they have completed the mandatory assessment training. Volunteer tutors are required to participate in initial tutor training and additional professional development learning opportunities while at the program. For prison-based peer tutoring program. Peer tutoring is an instructional model that uses one institutionalized individual to assist in providing or enhancing learning opportunities for other institutionalized individuals. A peer tutoring program must be structured and overseen by educators who assist with training and supervising tutors, setting educational goals, establishing an individual plan of instruction, and monitoring progress. This is in accordance with WIOA regulations 463.3. A prison-based peer tutoring program must have a full-time dedicated peer tutoring program coordinator. The coordinator is responsible for structuring, coordinating, and overseeing the peer tutoring program. This person is responsible for recruiting, training, and supervising tutors, setting educational goals, establishing the individual plan of instruction for each student in the program, developing lesson plans for the peer tutors to use and or assisting peer tutors to develop lesson plans and monitoring progress. The peer tutoring coordinator should be trained to administer the standardized assessments used by the program for reporting purposes. The minimum qualifications for the peer tutoring program coordinator are a bachelor's degree and previous experience as an educator, preferably with adults, and as an instructional leader. A peer tutor is an institutionalized individual who assists in providing or enhancing learning opportunities for other institutionalized individuals. Peer tutors must have a high school diploma or equivalent. A peer tutoring program is corrections education. Therefore, funds used for peer tutoring program count towards the 20% cap on state grant funds for corrections education. Participants served by division funded adult basic education programs cannot be enrolled or be required to be enrolled in secondary education. All participants must demonstrate a need for basic skills development based on the results of one of the approved standardized assessments administered before instruction starts. 
Participants served in classes paid with federal funds must be at least 16 years old. Please note that in Pennsylvania, the compulsory school age is 17. Therefore, 16 year olds are generally required to be enrolled in school. Programs must have evidence that any 16 year olds in the program are not required to be enrolled in secondary school. Participants receiving services under state funds must be at least 17 year, years old, must be Pennsylvania residents, and in addition to not being enrolled in secondary school, they cannot be enrolled in post-secondary school. As a result of this last requirement, programs cannot offer integrated education and training programs with state funds. In awarding funds, PDE will prioritize funding through the review and rating process to grant applications from eligible providers with past effectiveness in providing high quality services that improve the skills of eligible participants and help those participants to earn high school equivalency credentials, gain and retain employment, and or transition to post-secondary education or training. PDE will prioritize funding for those applications that demonstrate a thorough and detailed plan for a full service adult basic education program aligned with local needs that meet all of the minimum requirements described earlier in the webinar and that pro provide evidence of the applicant's organizational capacity to meet all of the programmatic reporting, administrative and fiscal requirements of the grant. A variety of instructional options, including instructional models, times and locations, to meet the scheduling needs of students. High quality instruction that is based on best practices and the college and career readiness standards for adult education and is of sufficient intensity to lead to student outcomes. Services that align with the strategies and goals of the local workforce area as defined in the local plan and with the activities and services of the PA CareerLink site partners. High quality student support services <clears throat> that help students to persist and succeed in adult basic education services <clears throat> and meet their personal, educational, and career goals. Applicants must demonstrate that they have the required staffing and that the staff members of the adult basic education program are well trained and meet the minimum requirements established by PDE. Refer to program guidelines, that's the adult education and family literacy guidelines, sections 204 and sections 204.1 to 204.7 for details. Program administrators, coordinators, tutor trainers, instructional staff, and student support staff must have at least a bachelor's degree. All programs are required to have a data quality specialist. The data quality specialist is not simply a clerical position doing data entry. This person is responsible for the accuracy and quality of the data reported to the Division of Adult Education. As a result, the division has established minimum requirements for this role. The person serving as the data quality specialist must have a bachelor's degree or a post-secondary credential in data management. Any additional data entry staff who are overseen by the data quality specialist may be clerical staff. The division recommends that programs have additional data entry staff if possible. Beginning in program year 2018-19, programs will be required to enter all data within 14 days of the data being collected once eData is open for the program year. Current staff members without the required credentials who are currently in these positions may be grandfathered for the same position for program year 1819. The Division of Adult Education is imposing additional requirements for teachers of mathematics at the College and Career Readiness Standards Level E. These individuals must have secondary math teaching certification or a bachelor's degree or higher. 
that ensures knowledge of mathematics required of certified math teachers. Refer to section 204 of the Adult Education and Family Literacy Guidelines for a link to a document listing the required knowledge. To support local programs in helping students access math instruction at the College and Career Readiness Standards Level E, the Division of Adult Education is requiring the successful applicant for the statewide distance learning project to provide distance learning classes in this content area. As stated earlier in the webinar, both federal and state funds have been allocated to local workforce areas using a needs-based funding formula. The resulting allocations are listed in Appendix B of the Request for Grant Application Guidelines. The amounts have been further broken out by the counties within each local workforce area that consists of multiple counties. Applicants are not required to apply for all of the funds allocated to a workforce area. Furthermore, applicants are allowed to apply for funds from multiple workforce areas in their applications. If an applicant requests funds for a county, it must ensure that it provides services that are accessible to residents of that county. Because the division is requiring grantees to be full service programs, we have established minimum funding requests for the federal adult education and state adult education budgets. They are $125,000 and $75,000 respectively. The state adult education amount excludes any funds requested under the optional tutoring program budget, which has no maximum or minimum request amount. Applicants should not request more funding than has been allocated to the proposed service area. Please note that while the allocations to the local workforce areas all exceed the minimum amounts, many county allocations do not. When determining proposed contract enrollment, applicants should not exceed a cost per student of $1,750. Grant applications will be submitted through PDE's e-grant system. Section 3 of the Request for Grant Application Guidelines provides details on getting access to the Adult Basic Education Direct Service 064 grant application in eGrants. In the meantime, to allow applicants to review the content of the grant application, we have posted PDFs of the grant content to the Division of Adult Education Grant Competitions webpage. Please note that these documents are for reference only as the applications will be submitted through eGrants. The eGrant system homepage has several user guides. In addition, we will post some grant specific tips to the Division of Adult Education Grant Competitions webpage. The Adult Basic Education Direct Service 064 grant application will open on Wednesday, February 28, 2018. The grant application deadline is April 3rd, 2018 at 2 p.m. At that point, the eGrant system will close the grant. In order to complete the grant, all sections must be marked complete. Once all sections are marked complete, the applicant will click, click the complete step button. The eGrant system records the exact time that the applicant clicks the button. Once the grant has been successfully completed, the status will be submitted for peer review. After the grant deadline, grants will be reviewed and scored. All applications will be reviewed and scored except those that are disqualified for one or more of the following reasons. The applicant does not meet the criteria for eligible applicant, the application is incomplete, or the application was not completed by the deadline. Review teams of three people will review the grant applications using a scoring rubric. A summary of the scoring is in Appendix A of the Request for Grant Application Guidelines. All three sections of the grant application, the narrative, the applicant information section, and the budgets will be reviewed and scored. In addition, local workforce boards will review adult basic education applications to provide services in the local area for consistency with the local plan. The Division of Adult Education will provide the appropriate applications and review tools 
to each local board after grants are submitted to the division via e-grants. Applicants should not give their applications to the local boards directly for review. PDE will take the results of the review by local boards and any related recommendations to improve an alignment into consideration when making grant awards. Once the applications have been reviewed and scored, they will be ranked from highest to lowest scoring. PDE will award grants to the highest scoring applicant in each of the local workforce development areas and will continue to award funds until the amount allocated to the area under the needs-based formula is reached or until all applications for service in the local area with a sufficient score have been funded. Applications with a score of less than 100 out of 147 will not be funded regardless of availability of funds. Note that the minimum score of 100 is for the main application only. The optional tutoring program score is not added to the main application score. Applications for the optional tutoring program funds will be awarded from highest scoring to lowest scoring until funds are no longer available. Applications for tutoring program funds with a score of less than 18 of 24 on that portion of the narrative will not be funded regardless of the availability of funds. Unsuccessful applications for the optional tutor training funds will not play a role in the awarding of funds under the main grant competition. However, applicants that are not awarded funds under the main grant competition will not be awarded tutor training funds regardless of the score on the tutor training portion of the application. Successful applications meeting the above criteria and under consideration for acceptance may require revisions or submission of additional information prior to approval. Successful grant applications will be approved for a four-year grant cycle. Grant funds will be awarded through annual one-year notifications of funding contingent on the availability of funds. Each year, grantees will be required to submit budgets and program year specific information via, either, <clears throat> via the e-grant system in order to receive funding. Each year's renewal option and grant amounts will be based on the following criteria. Contract compliance, including success in meeting contracted enrollment and providing the contracted services. Evidence of sufficient progress in meeting the state imposed performance standards. Evidence of continuous program improvement, compliance with fiscal and programmatic policies and guidelines, and the amount of the state and federal appropriations. Programs that fail to successfully address the above criteria may be terminated prior to the end of the grant cycle. PDE reserves the right to shorten or extend the four-year grant cycle as the situation warrants. The Division of Adult Education <clears throat> is providing many resources to applicants. Links to the resources are on the Division of Adult Education Grant Competitions webpage, which can be accessed by going to PDE's website at www.education.pa.gov. Select Instruction, then Adult Basic Education to get to the Division's homepage. From the homepage, click on Division of Adult Education Grant Competitions link. Applicants should review the resources both before and during the grant writing process. The resources include the Request for Grant Application Guidelines, the Adult Education and Family Literacy Guidelines, and relevant division policies. We also provide links to the Pennsylvania We Owe a Combined State Plan and the Regional and Local Workforce Plans. We do not have links to the Memoranda of Understanding for the local PA career links in the local areas. We recommend that applicants check the local board's website or contact the local board for copy of the MOUs. We strongly recommend that all agencies that are considering applying for Adult Basic Education Direct Service Grant carefully read the Request for Grant Application Guidelines and the Adult Education and Family Literacy Guidelines for Program Year 1819 before starting the grant application. 
For all applicants, these documents will give you a very good idea of what is expected of grantees. For currently funded program, there are some significant changes and new requirements to consider. Once you begin working on the grants in eGrants, be sure to read all of the help buttons. They are blue circles with a question mark in them next to the question. You click on the blue circle and it will bring up a box with the help information. The help buttons provide the maximum characters allowable for the answer and lists information that must be addressed in the answer. Note that the maximum character includes spaces. Make sure all charts and tables are complete. When composing the responses for each item in the grant application, make sure the answers address the information that is being requested. Avoid including information that is not relevant to the item. Make sure the responses are clear and concise and do not assume that the reviewers know your program. Reviewers should not have to search the answer for the necessary information or try to interpret agency-specific terminology. Unfortunately, eGrants does not allow for any formatting, bulleted or numbered lists, or paragraphs. The system also has problems recognizing special characters. Some applicants write the content of their grant applications in a Word or Pages document and then copy and paste the information into eGrants. If you choose to do this, make sure the text is plain text without any formatting before copying and pasting. This will prevent issues such as apostrophes showing up as question marks and other format conversion issues. Save often. At the bottom of each section is a save and continue button, which allows you to save the information that has been entered and keeps you on the same page. The save button will save the information and take you back to the grant application detail page. The eGrants system times out after 20 minutes of inactivity. However, it occasionally times out before that and while you are working on the grant. It is important to save regularly. Applicants have to provide evidence of effectiveness in two sections of the narrative. All applicants must provide the data themselves. The division will not do calculations on behalf of any applicant. In addition to providing quantitative data, applicants will provide a narrative explanation of the data. There is a section in the narrative called alignment with workforce with six questions relating proposed activities to the local workforce plan. The six questions are listed three times. This is to allow applicants providing services in multiple local workforce areas to address each area up to three individually. So, all applicants must complete the six questions for Workforce Area 1. Only applicants applying to serve two or three local areas have to complete the questions under Workforce Areas Sections 2 and 3. The maximum total score in the Alignment work Workforce section is 12 points, regardless of how many workforce areas are addressed. Scores for multiple areas will be averaged to get the total score. If applicants choose not to propose corrections education services or to apply for additional optional tutoring program funds, they have the option, I'm sorry, they have to open the sections, answer no to the first questions in each, and then enter NA for each of the questions. This will allow the section to be marked complete, which is necessary in order to submit the grant for review. In the program sites and class schedule under the applicant information, applicants first create a list of class locations. After adding all of the class locations, you must click the save and continue button at the bottom of the screen. This will create a drop down list of class locations in the first column of the class schedule and the first column of the supplemental class schedule sections. All applicants must complete the class schedule section. Applicants should use the supplemental class section only if they are planning to provide supplemental face-to-face -face classes as defined in section 403.3 of the Adult Education and Family Literacy Guidelines. 
do not list supplemental distance learning opportunities in the schedule. The tutoring schedule should only be completed by agencies that are applying for the additional optional tutoring program funds. The information in the agency activity summary should reflect the activities that the agency proposes to provide. The table requires you to propose the number of students the program will enroll in four different components and the dollar amount requested for each. Adult Basic Education, ABE Institutional, ASE GED Institutional, ABE Community Based, and ASE GED Community Based. Institutional refers to services in correctional or other residential facilities that are not open to the public. ABE, Adult Basic Education, includes Adult Basic Education services from Beginning Literacy, ABE, through High Intermediate, ABE, plus all of the ESL educational levels. ASC GED includes services only at low and high adult secondary education levels. In the Adult Basic Education Direct Service Grant application, applicants must add the federal and state adult education budgets and the optional tutoring pro program budget, if applicable, after creating the main application. In e-grants, they are referred to as sub-grants or sub-projects. Um, once you create the main grant, at the bottom of the grant details page, there's a button to click that says add sub-grants. Before completing the budgets, reviewer, review section 600 to 609 of the Adult Education and Family Literacy Guidelines. This covers allowable uses of funds, how to allocate allowable costs to the budget, and other fiscal requirements. Please note that in some cases, the Division of Adult Education uses the function and object codes differently than does PDE's Division of Federal Programs. Applicants must refer to the Adult Education and Family Literacy Guidelines when completing the budgets. The Federal Adult Education subgrant requires a 25% local match. The guidelines provide information on how to correctly calculate your required local match and related requirements. Applicants should plan for the purchase of approved standardized assessments in their budgets. The Division of Adult Education is implementing the use of TABE 1112 in program year 2018-19. Furthermore, the division anticipates changes to other approved assessments based on decisions at the federal level. WIOA has specific requirements regarding administrative costs of federally funded adult basic education funding. The Division of Adult Education uses function code 2300 for these administrative costs. Under WIOA, administrative costs are capped at 5% of the grant amount. The following costs are considered administrative costs, which means they must be charged to function code 2300. All administrative activities, including fiscal, human relations, and other administrative grant activities. Planning costs, including the costs associated with planning and coordination with workforce system partners. The PA CareerLink infrastructure costs paid from the grant and costs of contracted professional development. The cost of contracted professional development refers to funds paid to the larger agency to cover the cost of mandated agency professional development or training and the fees paid to outside professional development providers or consultants. It does not refer to adult education staff time participating in professional development activities. It also does not refer to the work of the in-house professional development specialist and the program administrators and coordinators supporting and leading staff professional development activities. Any restricted indirect costs charged to the grant are also considered administrative costs and are included in the 5% cap. 
WIOA allows the division to agree to, through negotiations with local programs, a higher amount when the 5% cap is too restrictive to allow for adequate planning and administration. Applicants that believe that they have a strong case for a waiver to the 5% cap should budget the expected administrative costs. The division will consider the request when successful applications are being processed. Please note that the priority for waivers will be given to allow successful applicants to meet the requirements con to contribute to PA CareerLink infrastructure costs. Please note that um, all LEAs are assigned restricted indirect cost rates by the Pennsylvania Department of Education, not the division, but by the Department of Education. Uh, it has come to my attention that many LEAs do not yet have approved restricted indirect cost rates. And therefore, until there is an approved rate, you will not be allowed to charge your restricted indirect costs. That applies to LEAs only. This concludes the Adult Basic Education Direct Service Grant Application Webinar. If you have any questions, please submit them to our resource email address at ra-able at pa.gov. Put Adult Basic Education Direct Service 064 in the subject line. Division of Adult Education staff will periodically post responses to submitted questions on the Division of Adult Education Grant Competitions webpage for all applicants to review. Do not send questions directly to division staff. Thank you. <laughs>